Hello, dear PGT and DSC School Assistant Candidates. Welcome back to my Grammar for Success channel. I am Koresh Babu, a retired lecturer in English from Hyderabad. In today's video, I am going to teach you the most poignant poem that is A Slumber Did My Spirit Seal, written by William Wordsworth. And this poem is very, very important from your examination point of view. And therefore, I request all of you to pay a very good attention to this poem till the end without skipping it in the middle. And I also request all of you to consider subscribing to my channel and also sharing this video with all your friends who are also going to take the same examination very shortly. Thank you so much. Now, let's get into the beautiful video. A slumber did my spirit seal. Written by William Wordsworth. This is a very interesting poem. It's a very concise poem, very poignant poem. And before I teach you this poem, I would like to talk to you a few things about uh, uh, this most celebrated poet, uh, William Wordsworth. You know, this William Wordsworth was born in 1770 uh, in Cockermouth in Cumbria in England. Okay, he was a major English romantic poet. He was also a great worshipper of nature and he was deeply influenced by his early experiences in the Lake District which can be found in most of his poems. And his poetry is characterized by its use of everyday language and natural themes. And this poet uh, is of the opinion that uh, the uh, poetry should capture the beauty of the uh, natural world and also the depth of the human emotions. That is the opinion of this uh, great uh, poet. And uh, uh, in association with uh, S.T. Coleridge, he helped launch the Romantic era in the English literature uh, with, with their joint uh, publication of uh, lyrical ballads uh, in 1798 or so. His most celebrated works include lines composed a few miles above Tinternabe. It is a very interesting poem. And also, when I wandered lonely as a cloud. That is the actual title of the poem. But uh, um, you can also call that poem by the name of Daffodils. And another very important poem of this poet is Prelude. It is about. It's an autobiographical poem. It is one of his uh, uh, celebrated uh, masterpieces. Okay, we can call it. And uh, here, uh, this uh, Wordsworth held uh, the most prestigious uh, um, position of uh, being the Poet Laureate of England from 1843 to 1850. And uh, his works have had uh, a lasting impact on the English literature, influencing countless uh, uh, poets and writers uh, who came after him. So, in my opinion, these are very, very important things about this uh, great poet. And uh, now, I would like to talk to you about this poem. A slumber did my spirit seal. Uh, is one of uh, Wordsworth's uh, most poignant and concise poems. And uh, in this poem, he tells us about his, uh, uh, his most profound engagement with nature, uh, with life and death. And this poem also explores the theme of uh, the transition from life to death and also the notion of immortality. Through this poem, he suggests that uh, death is not an end but uh, a, a transformation into another state of being. So, this kind of theory uh, he believes in. Okay. And even generally the Christians believe in that theory that there is another life for them. Okay, even uh, in, in Hinduism also, you can find that kind of belief. There is another life after death. So, death is not an end, but uh, uh, a transformation into another life or another state of being. So, that point uh, he tells us in this poem. Uh, this poem consists of two quatrains, you know, two quatrains. A quatrain is nothing but uh, a four-line stanza. So, there are uh, two quatrains in this poem, four plus four, eight lines are there and in this poem uh, the rhyme scheme followed is a b and a b okay 
A B and A B. So this is the rhyme scheme followed in this poem, and uh, both in the first uh, quatrain and also in the second quatrain. Okay, but uh, uh, some people contend that uh, it is A B A B C D C D something like that. It's not like that. In the first stanza A B A B, in the second stanza also A B A B rhyme scheme was followed. Okay, and moreover, these uh, uh, two quatrains are composed of uh, alternating lines of uh, I'm big. Uh, let me say, I'm big. I'm big tetrameter. Okay, I'm big tetrameter, and I'm big trimeter. Okay, I'm big trimeter is there. Okay, M E T R E M E T E R. Of course, M E T R E is the British spelling. M E T E R is the uh, American spelling. Okay, I'm big tetrameter. So here, these two quatrains are composed of uh, alternating lines of uh, I'm big tetrameter. I'm big. Uh, Trimeter. I am big tetrameter. About these meters, you know, I have dealt with very clearly and elaborately in my video uh, metrical patterns. Please, if time permits you, you can watch that video, right? And here, even then, I would like to talk to you about this. I am big uh, means you know one. Uh, what is that? Uh, uh, one one unstressed and stressed. Okay. That is there one unstressed, stressed. So this you know you may not you may not keep this uh, uh, way of teaching in your mind, and that's why I have taken the help of the musical uh, language, and then you can say da dum. What is that? Da dum. See. Da is uh, unstressed. Dum is uh, stressed. So that is that is called uh, one iambic foot. Okay, iambic foot. Okay, iambic foot. So da dum, one unstressed syllable, the other one is the stressed syllable. So when these two syllables come together, that forms an iambic foot. And if such feet are four in that line, then it is called an iambic tetrameter. Tetrameter means four feet uh, line. Iambic uh, feet only, but four feet must be there. Da dum, da dum, da dum. Da dum. So four feet are there in that line, and in the second line, I am a trimeter are there. That means three, three feet are there in the second line. You can uh, cut it into this thing also. I, uh, while teaching the poem, I cut this, uh, uh, I cut the poem into uh, I am a foot and all that. I'll show you how that uh, sounds uh, on that. So tetrameter means four I am a feet will be there. Trimeter means three I am a uh, feet will be there. So these are the two. Alternating lines you can find in these uh, two uh, quatrains. So this is very in, uh, important uh, information from your examination point of view. And moreover, this is uh, a rhyme scheme also. Okay, A B A B in the first stanza and in second stanza also A B A B. Okay, right. And uh, these are the important things uh, uh, that I can tell you about this uh, uh, poem. A slumber did my spirit seal. So now let's move on to learn all these things that I have so far talked to you. on this slide okay i would like to give all of them on this slide so that you can keep this video as a record okay that's why i'm going to give you all those points once again please listen to them once again right so about the poem what is about the poem here william wordsworth was born in 1770 in cockermouth cumbria okay cumbria is a place and in that place there is a small place called kakarmouth in that kakarmouth he was born in 1770 right and here another point about him is he was a major english romantic poet he was a major english romantic poet and here he was a great worshipper of nature so this point you must keep in your mind because the moment uh, when uh, the name of wordsworth is mentioned you must immediately remember one important point that is he was a great worshipper of nature okay and here uh, next point is he was deeply in influenced by his early experiences in the lake district okay there is a uh, lake district nearby so that area is called the lake district and in this lake district he had so many uh, early childhood experiences and these experiences you could find in much of his poetry that means in many of his poems you can find this lake district especially daffodils daffodils were seen by this poet only in the lake district and here one more important point about this poet is words versus poetry is characterized by its 
this use of everyday language and you know very well this uh, uh, wordsworth uh, writes his poetry using uh, the everyday language you know because you know the poetry must be understandable to each and everyone if it is very tough like the tough john don so people cannot understand that poetry okay and because the metaphysical poets wrote uh, their poems uh, in a in a very tough language uh, with uh, tough imagery and all those things because you know it it takes some time to understand the meaning of the poems of those metaphysical poets so just like the poetry of those metaphysical poets uh, his poetry is not uh, so it is very simple it is very easy it is very understandable because he used the everyday language in his poems that point is there and the themes of nature you can always find the themes of nature only in his poetry in his poems and the memory and the human condition all these things you can find in his poems and now let's move on to learn other important things he believed that poetry should capture the beauty of the natural world that's very important whatever may be the poetry the poetry must capture the beauty of the natural world and also the depth of human emotions the depth of human reactions okay that's very important the beautiful objects in nature are very important and our reactions our emotions when we see such beautiful scenery our reactions and our emotions are also very important in association with samuel taylor college yes to college he helped launch the romantic age in english literature with their joint publication lyrical ballads in 19 in 1798 please this is also an important point from your examination point of view please keep this point in your uh, mind because you know this uh, william wordsworth uh, joined his hands with uh, yes to college and uh, composed uh, a beautiful uh, literary work that is called uh, lyrical ballads uh, in 1798 right and here uh, keep this point in your mind his famous works include of course almost all his poems are famous are celebrated but a few of them i i would like to mention and these are more and more famous that's what i would like to tell you lines composed a few miles above tinton abbey and tinton abbey poem also you know very well i wander lonely as a cloud the other title of this uh, uh, poem is uh, daffodils and it is very popular in india only by the name daffodils not by this name is the original name actually why wandered lonely as a cloud okay and here the prelude so this is an autobiographical poem and it is considered one of his masterpieces one of his best poems okay and uh, let us remember these three important works of wordsworth as uh, uh, very popular okay as very very famous okay and now let's move on to learn other important points about this uh, great poet and here uh, wordsworth held the position the most prestigious position of a poet laureate asthana kavi something you say in telugu so he held the most prestigious position of poet laureate of england from 1843 to uh, 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 until his death in 1850 and in these two points you can understand for seven years you know nearly seven years he held this prestigious position and he died in 1850 these two things you can understand from this point and you go to the last point about him is his works have had a lasting impact a lasting impact me a permanent impact on english literature and all his works all his poetry has shown some permanent impact on english literature even today he was born somewhere in 18th century 19th century was over 20th century was over and in this 21st century people are now reading him he is the people are you know doing research on his poetical works and they are studying him they are studying his works okay and that is the greatness of that great poet because you know he you know he left a lasting impact on english literature and influencing countless poets countless poets were influenced by his writings by his poetry and also writers who came after him 
he influenced both the poets and the writers who came after him so these are only i think the most important points about william wordsworth of course other points are also there to learn okay but from our examination point of view i think these are only very very important points that's why i have given on these three slides and now let's move on to learn about the poem a slumber did my spirit seal okay and uh, after that i'll teach you the poem and after the poem i'll give you the line by line meaning also because it has only eight uh, lines okay i want to give you the line by line meaning also and afterwards the literary devices afterwards next uh, multiple choice questions the all these things are uh, going to be given one by one okay right get ready for that about the poem i would like to talk to you a few important things okay uh what is that uh, uh, a slumber did my spirit seal is one of william wordsworth's most poignant poignant means what deeply affecting poem if you read this poem uh, you would be very much moved with the pity and concise poems concise means very short okay and uh, there are many short poems uh, uh, written by william wordsworth this is one of them okay and here uh, one of william wordsworth's most poignant and concise short poems and this is the first point and the next point about this poem is in this poem what is reflected wordsworth's profound engagement with nature life and death in this poem you can see uh, wordsworth's engagement or uh, what is association with what with nature with life and death okay this point is also very important this poem explores the theme of transition from life to death okay so he tells you that uh, people uh, make a transition movement uh, from life to death that is quite uh, easy you can understand that and the notion of immortality in this also he tells us about the idea of immortality immortality means not having death mortal means having death immortality means not having death after death of some person his memories will be with, uh, will be with us so that is nothing but uh, he is immortal you don't forget that person immediately after his death so that's why you remember him ever and ever and ever so that's why in that way in our in our memories uh, he is uh, is immortal so though he died you now his memories can be with you for a long period in that way man remains immortal in the memories of human beings so that is there right and that idea also he deals with in this poem and here he pay attention and he suggests that death is not an end but a transformation into another state of being just now i have told you that the people christians generally believe in this philosophy or in this theory they say that death is not just an end but they have what uh, another uh, we can say life for them they have another life for them and uh, that is called a transformation they get a transformation into another life or another state of being so that is there so death is not an end but a transformation you are dying means you are going into another uh, uh, state of life they believe in that theory even in our hinduism also people believe in that theory so they think you no know, after this death you will have another janam so after that another janam so like that you know people will take so many janams or births something like that that's some piece of philosophy so in this you know poem the poet suggests that death is not an end but a transformation into another state of being don't think people are dying they are just going into another state of being that is the point is trying to drive to you all right deeply connected to the natural world right another point about him is it also about uh, another point about the poem is it reflects a journey through grief to a state of acceptance and this is also an important point and first of all he expresses his grief at the death of his beloved at the death of somebody who is very dear to him and afterwards you know he comes to a kind of acceptance yes this is quite natural he is dying means he is going to enter another state of being so thinking in that way he consoles himself okay he comforts himself so that is what is that's why it's a journey through grief to a state of acceptance one more thing is also there i think it was just it was first published in 1800 in 1800 
it was first published in 1800 as part of his collection lyrical ballads which he co-authored with Samuel Taylor Coleridge so because you know in 1798 lyrical ballads uh, was published okay 1800 means what uh, after uh, two years after this uh, lyrical ballads was published okay that means uh, even then it was included in this uh, lyrical ballads only that point you have to understand right you go to the other points about this poem very important points are uh, explained on this slide. Please pay a very good attention to this. The rhyme scheme followed in this poem is AB AB. Okay. In both uh, uh, the poem consists of two quatrains. I have already told you about uh, uh, what a quatrain is. A quatrain is a four line poem. That's enough. And each following this uh, alternating rhyming pattern. So in the first, uh, what is that? Uh, in the first stanza and in the second stanza. In the first quatrain and in the second quatrain, you can find the same rhyme scheme. Right. Leave it. And the next point about this poem is this. This. These three are very important. The two quatrains. These two quatrains uh, are of the poem are composed of alternating lines of iambic tetrameter da dhum this is da da is uh, written with a small letters means it is unstressed dhum is written uh, with uh, uh, capital letters means it is uh, stressed so da dhum da dhum da dhum so if there are this is one foot if there are fe four feet in that line that is called iambic tetrameter if there are only three feet in that line that is called iambic trimeter tri means three tetra means four you know that very well i need not tell you all those things creating a gentle rhythmic flow that mirrors the poem's contemplative tone okay and you go to the uh, next point the poem can be interpreted in various ways okay a uh, different persons uh, uh, interpret uh, the meaning of this poem in different ways okay it's quite natural. You take one meaning from this poem. I take another meaning from this poem because you know I view it from my own angle. You view, view it from your own angle. So don't say this. The meaning of this must be only in this way. How can you say that? So here, that's why this little poem was interpreted in various ways. Some readers see it as an expression of profound loss. In this poem, you can find the loss of his uh, uh, beloved person. And uh, Therefore, some readers say you can find only the profound loss of the poet. Okay, that is about the profound loss only you, uh, people say uh, he, the poet has written something they say. But uh, in that poem, he is mentioning the profound loss and uh, the poet is uh, trying very hard to come to, to terms with that loss. That means he is trying to compromise with that loss. That is what uh, uh, some readers think about uh, uh, think about this poem, right? And you go to the next one. And what do others think of this poem? Others view it as a philosophical meditation on the continuity of life and the natural cycles of existence. Some people think on uh, as a philosophical, it is a philosophical meditation on what? Continuity of life. You know, uh, the poet thinks this uh, life is continuing. Don't think you are going to die because you are going to enter another state of being. You are going to enter another life. That's why there is no death for you. You are born here, you have lived here and you have died here and don't think you have died. Your existence is over uh, with this death but you are entering another life and in that life you live and live and live again you enter into another life. So in this way, uh, this is, uh, you know, there, it, it, some people think it is only a meditation on the continuity of life okay, and the natural cycles of existence. So these are the natural cycles, okay, being born, being dead. Every man who is born should die, must die. Put in a prativadu, gitta kamanath. But it's a cycle. Today we are born, tomorrow we die. And again we are born, we are we are dead. So in this way, chavu putkal, this is a kind of cycle. So that's why, so some people think about this poem in this way. Some other readers think of this poem in this way. So that's why now from one poem people take different meanings okay and I am also uh, I am trying to give you the meaning you know you view it as you please okay that is up to you right I am going to give you the meaning of this poem right now right now let's move on to learn the poem the text of this poem is given here let me give you the meaning of the first stanza first stanza first quatrain first of all and this is the first stanza or first quatrain and um, uh, the rhyme scheme is also mentioned here for your understanding sake a b a b c seal feel 
fierce years how nice the rhyme scheme is wonderful rhyme scheme okay right and now let me give you the meaning of this first stanza what is the poet saying in this in this stanza a slumber did my spirit seal i had no human fears she seemed a thing that could not feel the touch of earthly ears okay and i have already told you this should be cut in detail for iambic this is iambic tetrameter iambic tetrameter it this is iambic uh, trimeter again this is it okay and here say a slum this is no a slum okay unstressed stuff a slum stressed a slum birdit my spee rit seal 1 2 3 4 uh, feet are there in that i am big feet now i read the uh, line uh, using that stress and unstressed pattern okay a slum birdit my spee rit seal something like that. stress ups and downs okay and here also i mean trimeter only 3 feet are there i had okay i had okay no hu man fears i had no hu man fears three feet are there in this line so similarly uh, all the lines are uh, uh, like that okay so i make a tetrameter in the first line i make trimeter in the second line similarly uh, in the third line i make tetrameter then i make a uh, trimeter so in this way the meter is also followed in this hope you are following me um, easily okay and now i would like to give you the meaning of this uh, stanza okay now you look at the meaning of this uh, what is the meaning of this uh, a slumber did my spirit seal very simple a slumber slumber means what uh, a state of what is that a state of deep sleep okay a state of slumber means gadha nidra a slumber means slumber sleep is also sleep means ordinary sleep slumber means you no know, it is stronger than that sleep you know when you go deep into the sleep that's called slumber a slumber means you know a state of deep sleep lotaina nidra gadha nidra so a slumber did my spirit seal my spirit means means my soul or my heart any meaning you can take from the spirit everybody knows spirit means soul spirit means heart so here the poet says that a state of deep sleep has what filled his heart filled his heart sealed means what here filled his heart sealing you seal the box with a tape sealing or closing so here the meaning you have to take is, is the poet says uh, a state of deep sleep has uh, uh, closed or filled his heart with the what with numbness with the numbness okay numbness means what numbness is nothing but a kind of state in which you are unable to think you are unable to uh, react you are unable to talk you are unable to say anything you are unable to feel you are unable to think you are unable to feel you are unable to react to anything because of that shock that's called numbness in other words you can also call it uh, emotionlessness 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 elanti bhavodhyavegalu lenatvanti achetanamaina sthiti no feelings no aspirations no 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 nothing so that's that state is called emotionlessness passionlessness impassiveness so there are there are many words but here the poet says that that a state of deep sleep has filled his heart with what with numbness seal means here numbness when you close something what happens that won't come out it is closed when you seal something the things that are in that box will not come out closed it is dead it is okay it's over that's all so in the same way here this deep sleep has filled his heart with us with the numbness and that means you know emotionlessness and now what happened therefore he says you know i had no human fears therefore i am totally detached from fears and i am totally detached from feelings emotions aspirations and etc
okay because this slumber has filled my heart with numbness i don't have any feelings i don't have any emotions i don't have any aspirations i don't have fears at all these are the worldly fears prapanchikamainatvanti bhayalu aandolanalu all are no no more for this poet that's why i had no human fears i have no ordinary human fears and worries i have no human feelings i have no human worries i have no human uh, emotions and all because this slumber has filled my heart with numbness in gaada nidra na hrudayanni oka achetanatvam to let me say in telugu achetanatvam to nimpi vesindi kabatti naaku manavula kunde maamulu ainatvanti aa fears gaani worries gaani feelings gaani emotions gaani emi levu ani cheppi here the poet is saying that okay that's the meaning of those two lines and you go to the uh, next two lines she seemed a thing that could not feel okay now he is making the mention of this she perhaps uh, she means uh, his uh, uh, fictional character that is lucy i think uh, because you know he created a character called uh, lucy and uh, uh, that uh, must be this she and that's why uh, she because you don't know who that she is and uh, we can just uh, uh, suppose that uh, it is none other than uh, his uh, fictional character that is lucy she seemed a thing that could not feel and here he is talking about this woman this lucy and he says that this woman looks like a person who is beyond physical sensations and emotions that means you know physical emotions and physical sensations cannot touch her భౌతికమైనటువంటి ఫీలింగ్స్ ఆమెను ఏమీ చెయ్యలేవు సో హియర్ షీ సీమ్డ్ ఎ థింగ్ దట్ కుడ్ నాట్ ఫీల్ హూ హ్యాస్ నో ఎమోషన్స్ ఎట్ ఆల్ హూ హ్యాస్ నో ఫిజికల్ సెన్సేషన్స్ అండ్ ఎమోషన్స్ హూ ఈస్ బియాండ్ ఫిజికల్ సెన్సేషన్స్ అండ్ ఎమోషన్స్ అంటే ఈ యొక్క భౌతికమైనటువంటి ఫీలింగ్స్కు అతీతంగా ఆమె ఉండింది అంటున్నారు see the meaning of this the touch of earthly ears so what is the meaning of this this woman that is not, none other than lucy you know she seems like a person who is beyond physical sensations and emotions one point and she also uh, looks to be someone who is uh, uh, beyond the touch of earthly ears beyond the touch of earthly ears means you no know, earthly means what uh, worldly experiences worldly okay worldly experiences uh, what are the worldly experiences like passage of time okay passage of time okay passage of time is there and aging is also there these are the uh, what you call uh, worldly experiences when you are born into this world means uh, you must undergo those things the passage of time you must uh, you must grow according to the passage of time one point you must uh, start to aging you'll be growing and growing and growing you'll be aging so now this aging does not affect her and this passage of time will also not affect her she is beyond these uh, worldly experiences what are the worldly experiences like passage of time kala gamanam yokka prabhavam aa meeda undadata alage a vayasu malluta anedi aameku aa meeda prabhavam chepa that means you no know, perhaps from these two lines you understand that this um, woman that is lucy must have been uh, dead long back and about that uh, lucy he was talk that's why you now if he, if you are a human being you will be uh, you are subject to uh, physical sensations and emotions manushi ite manushi prati manushi is subject to uh, physical emotions and sensations but here she says the poet says you know, she seemed a thing that could not feel that means she is, seems she looks like a person who is beyond physical uh, emotions and uh, physical sensations vaatika ame ame atithanga undi antunnadu atithanga undante manushi ite atithanga endu kuntadu undaledu kada so perhaps from that line you understand that she must have been dead and here also in this point also he makes it clear she is beyond the worldly experiences like the passage of time and aging mari prapanchika anubhavalu ante emti kalam gatistuna koddi danto paatu edagadam mari vayasu pai badadam vayasu perigadam so kalam tho paatu nadavadam vayasu perigadam these are the two main features of this worldly experiences and now the poet says she is beyond these worldly experiences indi vaatika atithanga undante am eppudu chanipoyindani oka bhavana oka ardhanni we have to take from these two lines okay okay now let's move on to learn the meaning of the uh, next stanza no motion has she now 
and no force so it's such a simple line you can easily understand but uh, uh, as i have to interpret the meaning of that elaborately i am just i can say that the poet says that this uh, woman i have drawn the picture of this woman this woman has neither motion motion means what everybody knows movement ame lo kadalika ledu nor force nor strength because she is in the state of death చనిపోయిన వాళ్ళలో స్ట్రెంగ్త్ ఎక్కడ ఉంటుంది మూమెంట్ ఎక్కడ ఉంటుంది దిస్ లైన్ తెలిసి దట్ దిస్ ఉమన్ దట్ ఈస్ లూసీ మస్ట్ హ్యావ్ బీన్ డెడ్ ఈస్ డెడ్ ఇస్ ఈస్ నో మోర్ ఇప్పుడు చనిపోయిందని ఇక్కడ క్లియర్గా అర్థమవుతుంది మనం ఇక్కడ చెప్తాను ఆమె అన్నిటికి అతీతంగా ఉందంటే అతీతంగా మానవ మాత్రలు అతీతంగా ఉండరు ఇట్ ఇస్ హైలీ ఇంపాసిబుల్ బట్ హియర్ షీఈస్ బియాండ్ ఆల్ దోస్ థింగ్స్ మీన్స్ షీ మస్ట్ హ్యావ్ బీన్ డెడ్ అని ఇక్కడ అనుకున్నాం హియర్ వీ హ్యావ్ డిసైడెడ్ దట్ బట్ ఇన్ దిస్ లైన్ హి ఈస్ మేకింగ్ ఇట్ క్లియర్ the poet is making clear that uh, there is neither motion in her nor strength because she is in the state of death amelo kadalika ledu amelo balamu ledu shakti ledu av endu kuntai sanipoyina shariramlo so that's why she is in the state of death she neither hears nor sees yes that's true any dead man cannot hear cannot see because all the body becomes paralyzed no life in the body no movement in the body no energy in the body you cannot see you cannot hear all these things cannot take place okay so that is the state of death right now you see the meaning of the third line rolled round in earth's diurnal course okay rolled round means you no know, she has been packed she has been wrapped okay in earth's earth's diurnal diurnal means happening every day nityamu jarige etatvanti what is the uh, diurnal course of this earth moving about the sun is a diurnal course so here now the poet says she has been rolled round that means you no know, she has been wrapped as a part and parcel of this uh, natural world but chani payin tarata amen em chestaru battalu chutti vesi amen paathi pettestaru according to christian uh, this thing even according to the hindu funeral uh, rites you know very well so here rolled round means you no know, wrapped the body of the woman has been wrapped uh, as a part and parcel of this uh, uh, natural world because you come into this world from this nature you go back again into nature okay prakruti lo nunchi vastamu prakruti lo nike velipotam this is the human system so you say matti lo nunchi putti matti lo ne kalustam that is the main principle of uh, the um, of many religions we are born from this uh, dust and again we turn into dust christian philosophy is like that we are born from this dust and we we just go back to that dust matti lo nunchi putti matti loge maaripotam matti ga maaripotam so that is ante that means you know from nature we come into this world again we go back into nature so here also she has been packed and as a as a part and parcel of this natural world ee prakruti loka bhaganga maaripovadam kosamu aame ala aame shavamala pack cheyabadi pampinchi vebadi with rocks and stones and trees these these three things tell you that she becomes now a part and parcel of this natural world rallu rappala tho nillinatvanti ee prakrutilo aame oka bhaganga maaripothundi she becomes a part and parcel of this world which is full of rocks stones trees and everything the point here the poet wants to make clear is that we have come into this world from nature and we again go back back into this nature so coming from nature going back into nature it's a it's a diurnal course just like earth moves about the sun is a diurnal course సూర్యుని చుట్టూ భూమి తిరగడం అనేది ఎలాంటి మామూలైన విషయము ప్రకృతిలో నుంచి మనం పుట్టి ప్రకృతిలోనే కలిసిపోయేటటువంటి దాన్ని ఏమంటారంటే ఇది డైర్నల్ కోర్స్ సో హియర్ ఆల్సో దిస్ ఉమన్ దిస్ రిలూసీ హ్యాస్ బీన్ ప్యాక్డ్ అండ్ సెంట్ ఇన్ టు ద న్యాచురల్ వర్ల్డ్ దిస్ ఈస్ ద మీనింగ్ ఆఫ్ ది స్మాల్ పోయం ఆఫ్ కోర్స్ ఇట్స్ యూ కెన్ గెట్ సమ్ ఫిలసాఫికల్ మీనింగ్ యూ ప్లీజ్ పాండర్ ఓవర్ ద మీనింగ్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ పోయం వన్స్ అగైన్ మీరు నిదానంగా ఉన్న మీ మీనింగ్ని ఒకసారి ఆలోచిస్తే మీకు యు ఆర్ ఆల్ గ్రోన్ అప్స్ యు అండర్స్టాండ్ ద ఇన్నర్ మీనింగ్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ లిటిల్ పోయం ఓకే నౌ లెట్ మీ గో టు టీచ్ యూ ద లైన్ బై లైన్ మీనింగ్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ పోయం బికాస్ ఇట్ హ్యాస్ ఓన్లీ ఎయిట్ లైన్స్ దేర్ ఫర్ ఐ హ్యావ్ డిసైడెడ్ టు గివ్ యూ ద లైన్ బై లైన్ మీనింగ్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ పోయం లైన్ బై లైన్ సమ్మరీ ఆఫ్ ఎస్ లంబర్ డిడ్ మై స్పిరిట్ సీల్ సో వెరీ క్విక్లీ ఐ గో ఓవర్ ఆల్ ద ఇంపార్టెంట్ థింగ్స్ బికాస్ ఐ హ్యావ్ ఆల్రెడీ టాట్ యూ దిస్ పోయం ఓకే ఎస్ లంబర్ డిడ్ మై స్పిరిట్ సీల్ సో 
whatever the meaning I have given you, the same meaning is written here. What is that? Words verses say that a state of deep sleep has filled his heart or soul with numbness. Numbness means I have already explained to you that it is nothing but what? Emotionlessness, impassiveness in which you are unable to think, you are unable to feel, you are unable to react to anything. That kind of achetanatva sthiti is called a numbness. Okay, maybe due to some grief or a profound emotional experience. It's maybe generally when are you filled with numbness? Numbness is caused due to some shock. So when are you filled with the numbness means whenever you are struck by grief or some profound emotional experience. Okay, bhavodvegam in anubhava uchchina purigani, lekunta dukkam uchchina purigani, manamala achetana sthiti loke veltha, mulku palku lekunda unta. So here, maybe he was, his heart was filled with numbness because of something. It is only a guess, right? And here, you go to the meaning of the second one, I had no human fears. That means the poet says that that state has made him get detached okay it's a typographical mistake detached it, it d must be there this uh, state of deep sleep has made him get detached from the ordinary human fears and worries okay you know the meaning of that and you go to the meaning of the third line she seemed a thing that could not feel that means uh, the poet says that the woman perhaps Lucy, looks like uh, uh, she is unimpacted by physical sensations and uh, emotions. That means she is uh, beyond these physical sensations and emotions because she must have been dead or she is dead. That is clearly understood from this line. Okay. And you go to the fourth line. The touch of earthly uh, ears. She is also beyond the touch of earthly ears. So that means the poet says she seems unaffected by earthly experiences like the passage of time. Kala gamana ki manamu badlama yundar. Kalam te che ibandula gumanu ready ga undar. Kala gamana ki badlama yundar. Kala man ke imne indichinu watani ki tattu ne vidanga manu undar. Alam liyadi me because she is dead. And here and the aging process. And you are alive means you must be subject to growing or aging. But ko naavante nu perugute ne undar. That is there. That's a system, right? So these are the um, uh, four lines of the poem, and uh, the meaning is also clearly given. You please uh, think of this uh, uh, meaning, and uh, uh, you go to the meaning of the next stanza. No motion has she now. No force. Okay, simple. There is neither movement nor physical strength in her body as she is in the state of death. You know the meaning of that. Sixth one. She neither hears nor sees. Okay, very simple. She can no longer hear or see, emphasizing her complete detachment of life. Complete death. Okay. And here, rolled round in earth's diurnal course. Rolls around in the earth's diurnal course. She has been wrapped into a part and parcel of the routine natural world. That means she has been packed, she has been wrapped, and she has been sent into the natural world. So here, what is happening? You know, she has been sent into, she has been made a part and parcel of this natural world. So that is the meaning you have to. To take. That moves with the earth's daily rot rotation and world, world allowed and it will be moving about the sun. Earth move out and world would move out and the other. Right, okay. You go to the next uh, line last night with rocks, stones, and trees. And here you pay attention death, she is united with the natural elements. Okay, because we come from dust and we go back to dust. So that is the principle is explained here. In death, she is united with the natural elements. These are all natural elements with rocks, stones, trees, forests, rivers, what not. Everything in this creation will come under natural elements. So she is united with the natural elements, suggesting a peaceful return to nature and the cycle of life. Okay, after living the cycle of life, being born, being dead, it is a cycle of life. Jivita chakram puttadamu gittadam. That's the cycle of life. So afterwards, what happened? She has peacefully returned to nature. Prakriti loki prashantanga veli poindi. Repu manamu ante. We also return to nature. We have come from nature. We return to nature. That is the human philosophy. Right. Now let's move on to uh, learn about the um, literary devices the poet has employed in this uh, little poem. 
and uh, literary devices used in a slumber did my spirit seal and here see these devices are used to enhance uh, the emotional depth and the thematic richness of the poem generally to enhance uh, uh, the beauty of the poem the depth of the poem the thematic richness of the poem the poets will be employing certain literary devices that you know very well and here you pay attention alliteration uh, here i have mentioned for the first time alliteration at the beginning okay and here the repetition of consonant sounds uh, at the beginning of words uh, uh, is called a repeat alliteration okay in two or more than two words if a consonantal sound is uh, uh, repeated that itself is called alliteration about this i have been telling you right from the videos i have been making okay and uh, here you pay attention a spirit seal sa sa and rolled round ra ra so this is called alliteration because it brings some beauty to the poem some it gives some a uh, charm to the poem that is the meaning okay and alliteration is over now you go to imagery imagery means i have already told you uh, that it is nothing but uh, visualization whenever something is said uh, you immediately visualize it and uh, immediately the picture of that uh, visualization will fall or appear on your mental screen so that picture is called imagery that is there and here you pay attention uh, vivid descriptions that appeal to the senses as seen in okay so rolled round in earth's diurnal course with rocks and stones and trees so this gives you some kind of picture roll rolled round means you know she has been packed she has been wrapped with white cloths and she has been made a part and parcel of this natural world kada ఆమె చనిపోయినాక ఆమె బట్టల్లో చుట్టి ఆమె ప్రకృతిలో కలిపేస్తారు అంటే మీకు చెప్పారు మేబీ షీ హ్యాస్ బీన్ బరీడ్ ఆర్ షీ హ్యాస్ బీన్ క్రిమేటెడ్ విత్ రాక్స్ అండ్ స్టోన్స్ అండ్ ట్రీస్ ఇన్ నేచర్ వాట్ కెన్ యూ ఫైండ్ రాక్స్ స్టోన్స్ ట్రీస్ ఫారెస్ట్ రివర్స్ సీస్ వాట్ నాట్ మెనీ థింగ్స్ యూ కెన్ ఫైండ్ ఇన్ దిస్ నేచర్ దట్ మీన్స్ నో యూ హ్యావ్ కమ్ ఫ్రమ్ దిస్ నేచర్ అండ్ అగైన్ యూ ఆర్ గోయింగ్ బ్యాక్ ఇన్ టు నేచర్ సో దిస్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ పిక్చర్ విల్ ఇమీడియట్లీ ఫ్లాష్ ఆన్ యువర్ మెంటల్ స్క్రీన్ వెన్ యూ హ్యాపెన్ టు రీడ్ దీస్ టూ లైన్స్ సో దిస్ ఈస్ కాల్డ్ ఇమేజరీ పర్సానిఫికేషన్ ఈస్ దేర్ ఓకే పర్సానిఫికేషన్ మీన్స్ అట్రిబ్యూటింగ్ హ్యూమన్ క్యారెక్టరిస్టిక్స్ టు నాన్ హ్యూమన్ థింగ్స్ నాన్ హ్యూమన్ థింగ్స్కి హ్యూమన్ క్వాలిటీస్ కానీ ట్రేడ్స్ కానీ క్యారెక్టరిస్టిక్స్ లక్షణాలను ఆపాదిస్తే దట్ ఈస్ కాల్డ్ పర్సానిఫికేషన్ యూ నో దట్ వెరీ వెల్ అండ్ హియర్ రిపే అటెన్షన్ ద పోయిట్ పర్సన్ ఫర్ స్లంబర్ స్లంబర్ మీన్స్ ద స్టేట్ ఆఫ్ డీప్ స్లీప్ గాఢ నిద్ర గాఢ నిద్ర అండ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ సెట్ టు బి సీలింగ్ హిస్ స్పిరిట్ గాఢ నిద్ర ఏం చేసింది అంటే గాఢ నిద్ర డస్ ఇట్ హ్యావ్ నో లైఫ్ ఈజ్ ఇట్ ఎ హ్యూమన్ బీయింగ్ what did this slumber do it has filled the poet's heart with numbness aina hrudayanni aa achetanattam tho nimpi aa hrudayanni seal chesi padesesindi so the slumber is not a human being but here uh, the poet has personified this slumber and he says it has filled the poet's heart with numbness and sealed his heart right said to be sealing spirit that's the so here in this poem slumber is personified right and here uh, contrast is there contrast means putting two things side by side okay and uh, comparing that is called contrast bedamu chuputa right and here you pay attention the poem contrasts life and death life in the first stanza and death in the second stanza okay as uh, in the first stanza also you can find uh, death also okay in the first stanza the woman seems beyond physical limit- limitations physical sensations physical what kathi tanga undi ani cheppi antu chanipoyinandane bhavana kalagakunda chusharu okay whatever it is while the sec- while in the second stanza she is described as completely devoid of life and integrated into nature and in the second stanza he says she has been dead okay and she has been merged with the nature she has been mixed with the nature okay and in this way two things are put side by side and that is called contrast now we go to uh, learn other uh, uh, literary devices and uh, symbolism is there symbol means symbol symbol means you st- it uh, something stands as a symbol for something okay here the poem uses the natural elements uh, okay earth uh, rocks uh, reason they are all symbols of what nature rallu rappalu chetlu ante indi what is this all these things stand as a symbol for nature ప్రకృతికి ఒక 
a symbol ga unnai so that is why so here the poem uses natural elements earth rocks and tree, stones trees as symbols of the eternal cycle of life okay or and death so there are symbols of uh, eternal cycle of life and death uh, tone is there what is the tone of this poem the tone shifts from a tranquil and almost serene contemplation in the first stanza in the first stanza you can find tranquil maybe cool and calm and serene contemplation in the first stanza to a somber and reflective mood in the second stanza and uh, suddenly that calm mood will shift into somber uh, mood in the second stanza somber means what serious grave something like that emphasizing the finality of death okay and here uh, rhyme scheme is there okay this is the last one i think what is the rhyme scheme used in this the poem follows an abab rhyme scheme which provides a structured and rhythm make a quality so this is there okay with this you know the literary devices have also come to an end and uh, please you follow all of them if you have any problem please text me on you on the uh, whatsapp number provided in the description okay now we move to uh, do the exercise on this poem i have given you as many as 20 multiple choice questions and uh, you answer all these multiple choice questions on your own so here i am going to read the question and if possible i'll read the options also for your convenience and uh, if you cannot uh, answer any one of them you can just go to the last slide of this video and uh, see the answers provided okay let's come on now let's move on to uh, look at uh, the multiple choice questions multiple choice questions on a slumber did my spirit seal okay and here what is the primary theme of the poem a slumber did my spirit seal what is the primary theme okay theme love nature death and immortality war so that is there right you go to the next question what effect does the slumber have on the speaker spirit in the first stanza okay it makes the speaker restless it seals the speaker spirit from mortal fears it fills the speaker with joy it causes the speaker to dream vividly you know the correct answer you please tick it now let's move on to other questions and in which collection was a slumber did my spirit uh, seal uh, first published in which collection of poems was it first published you know that very well and uh, uh, poems in two volumes the prelude the lyrical ballads the excursion okay and you go to the fourth one what is the rhyme scheme of the poem okay a b a b a b a b a b a b something like that these four options are given you choose the correct one now we go to uh, other questions how does the speaker describe the loved one uh, after death resting peacefully floating in the sky rolled round in earth's diurnal course singing with angels okay and here what meter is primarily used in the poem okay iambic pentameter iambic tetrameter iambic tetrameter and trimeter dactylic hexameter all these meters you know very well and uh, uh, dear dsc and pgt candidates please uh, watch my video made on the metrical patterns that's a very important one so you can have some very good idea about those uh, metrical patterns and all that so you can understand this very well uh, now we move on to other questions seventh one what does the phrase earth's diurnal course refer to the daily rotation of the earth the changing seasons the path of the sun the cycle of life and death what is that okay what literary device is prominently used in the line a, a slumber did my see a spirit seal what literary device is used in that simile personification metaphor hyperbole you know the correct answer choose it okay now we move on to other questions what feeling does the speaker express in the poem joyful excitement bitter resentment deep sorrow calm acceptance how many stanzas does the poem consist of one two three four now let's move on to other questions how does the speaker describe the loved one in the second stanza as lifeless and motionless as lively and spirited as joyful and content okay as restless and troubled okay it's like that what is the tone of the poem angry and resentful joyful and celebratory reflective and somber confused and chaotic what is the right one you know the answer you choose it right now let's move to other questions the phrase she seemed a thing that could not feel suggests what about the loved suggests what about the loved one 
she is numb to emotions she is detached from earthly experiences she is overwhelmed with feelings she is indifferent to life what is that what does it indicate what is the effect of the poem's concise structure on its overall impact it creates a feeling of confusion it intensifies the emotional impact it makes the poem difficult to understand it dilutes the poem's message what is that oh, you know that very well come on let's move on to other questions which romantic characteristic is most evident in this poem romantic character celebration of industrialization emphasis on rational thought focus on individual emotion nature praise for urban life you know the characteristics of romantic era romantic poetry and all that so being the literature students you should know the literary characteristics of that romantic era romantic literature mm. and here which of the following best describes the loved one's transformation after death she becomes a ghost she becomes a part of the natural cycle she ascends to heaven she is reincarnated what's the right one you know that very well let's move on to other questions how does words words portrayal of death uh, in this in this poem differ from traditional views he sees it as the end of existence he views it as a peaceful return to nature he presents it as a frightening experience he ignores it altogether what is his uh, view uh, about this death okay what does the speaker mean by no motion has she now no force what is the meaning of that she is free from life's struggles she is powerless and lifeless she is resting after a long journey she is experiencing spiritual energy you know the meaning okay let's move on to last set of questions in the con- in the context of the poem what does the term spirit most likely refer to generally i have i have you now generally spirit means soul soul means heart that is the general meaning but uh, the speaker's courage the loved one's soul a ghostly spirit presence the speaker's emotional state what is the right one here generally spirit means actual meaning is that literary meaning and figurative meaning is something so you choose that uh, figurative meaning you go to the last one what does the word slumber metaphorically represent in the poem slumber means what is it really slumber గాఢ నిద్ర అంటే గాఢ నిద్ర నిజంగా అదేనా సో హియర్ ఈస్ ఏ ఫిజికల్ స్లీప్ ఏ టెంపరీ రెస్ట్ ఏ డెత్ అండ్ ద పీస్ ఇట్ బ్రింగ్స్ ఏ స్టేట్ ఆఫ్ కన్ఫ్యూజన్ వాట్ ఈస్ దట్ స్లంబర్ ఓకే హియర్ యూ ట్రై టు థింక్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ స్లంబర్ అండ్ లుకింగ్ ఎట్ దీస్ ఆప్షన్స్ ట్రై టు ఆన్సర్ ఇట్ కరెక్ట్లీ ఓకే ఇఫ్ యూ కెనాట్ ఆన్సర్ ఇట్ ప్లీజ్ లుక్ ఎట్ ద ఆన్సర్స్ ఆల్సో గివెన్ ఎట్ ద ఎండ్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ ఎక్సర్సైజ్ నౌ లెట్స్ మూవ్ ఆన్ టు లుక్ ఎట్ ద ఆన్సర్స్ గివెన్ ఎట్ ద ఎండ్ ఆన్సర్స్ ఆర్ గివెన్ హియర్ for the questions from 1 to 10 these are the answers for the questions from 11 to 20 so these are the answers with this you know the video comes to an end hello dear pgt and dsc school assistant candidates thank you so much for watching this beautiful video uh, if you have any problem with regard to this poem or the meaning please text me on my whatsapp number that is provided in the description okay and uh, with another beautiful video i shall be back to you until then bye see you all of you